Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's me and Tommy on the Murder Journal. And there have been some breaking developments since the hung jury in the Karen Reed trial. I'm only laughing okay. right, <laughs> right now. Oh the, the hung <laughs> jury. And what has come out with this uh, um, dismissal? And upon reading the dismissal papers, uh, dealing with count one and, and three. So we are going to get into all of this. No, we're not going to do it. All the other channels have done where we read through the entire motion, 10 page motion to dismiss. You've already okay. seen it. Yeah. You've done it. You know what? We're going to summarize it for you. So here we go. All right. So on Monday, huge, huge developments in the case in which the defense team, Karen Reed's team, filed a motion to dismiss. Yeah, and truth be told, this this I want to call it an affidavit. It's not this it's, uh, it's a this, motion. This motion, they talked to three jury members. They talked to Mm -mm. No, because in there no. it says jury, juror A, juror B, and juror C. Yeah, and I read through it. I don't think the judge is going to grant the motion to dismiss because it's hearsay. It didn't come directly from the jurors. The jurors told someone else who contacted the defense. That was in juror C, A, and B, and now there's a fourth juror who just reached out to them. The fourth juror did, but in the motion to dismiss, it stated that it was an outside part. It was a third party contact. I know that um, as far as jury C, there was an outside party with and it. jury B. It's both. So in their motion to dismiss, now what they can do is if, but it's it's not over because oh, absolutely what, not. What can happen with that is. They, if she denies it, it's automatically appealable. And when they appeal, then they can bring the jurors. However, as this is what I think is really weird is, and I apologize for the glare in my glasses. Um, with this, right after the motion to dismiss, the judge filed an order to impound, meaning uh, she sealed the names of all the jurors. So this is what else is in the motion, uh, the whole shebang for this. Okay. You guys, we're going to, we're going to just narrow this down. What happened was when the jury, uh, rendered their decision, they voted unanimously no to the second degree murder charge and leaving the scene. But when they voted, they, what they were deadlocked on was, I think, the DUI charge, but it was a different charge. Here's the here's the conundrum. If they voted no unanimously on the murder charge, second degree murder charge, and leaving the scene, she theoretically should not be retried on those two charges because, because it's double, double jeopardy, jeopardy. Yeah. under the Constitution. So it's a Big cluster, you know, I want to use the F-bomb because that's so fitting, but we're not going to. But it's a big, hot mess. And now, as of today, you said a, f a fourth juror came forward. But from what I heard, she, this fourth juror may have actually contacted the defense. Uh, she did. Or they did. I'm just going to say they. It's we don't know. She he, or he. It he. could be the one. I'm just going to say instead of saying she, mm -hmm. they contacted and there was another uh, write up that went into the court system as of today of the 10th. Today is the 10th, right? Uh, because when they were talking about the motion on I, Little, I can't, Melanie, Melanie Little. Melanie what? Little. Yeah. yeah. Melanie Little. On her, on her site. 
Now, guys, so you guys know uh, she is an attorney. I really like Attorney Little, and um, she has a YouTube channel, Attorney Melanie Little, Very and nice. she had uh, Attorney Mark Bettero, who I also, he is a criminal defense attorney. Um, I really, really, really like them. Um, so I would recommend if you want to go further into the motion to dismiss, even though it's long on her channel, her and Mark go in depth into what was filed, the claims, and what could subsequently happen. Can the judge be um, subpoenaed, witnessed, uh, or something like that? I, I don't know. I, and that's what brings me my back around to where I was talking about. Wouldn't there be records of what was actually put on that piece of paper that she read? That it had to be filed yeah. within. Well, so they could just pull those records, unless she's destroyed that copy. I don't know. It's just so if they call Judge Canoni as a witness then Judge Canoni would have to disqualify herself. She could no longer. Yeah, she can no longer preside. But as of right now, she's still presiding. She could she could just say no. And then they would have to file an appeal. When they file the appeal, they can call the jurors. They can call the judge. And that's the other thing that I'm understanding is in mass, defense and offense cannot reach out to the jurors. It has to be a permission. It has to be the opposite. Yeah, it has to be them reaching out or they have to get special permission from a, a judge to allow it. From Massachusetts, the it's really weird. They got crazy laws. laws. It's really weird and backwards. The fallout from the yeah. trial and this <laughs> motion to dismiss is like it, it, it's it's you thought there were fireworks, Tommy, in the courtroom. What's happening now is kind of unbelievable. I look, we talked about Rita before, and I'm going to bring it up now. She is detrimental on this, not just the case itself, but everything that's going in town. Like she's just putting everybody on Rita. Blast. Rita, did I, what did Rita I Lombardi? There it is. Um, uh, but we got Proctor who's on no paid administrated leave, which the union right now is saying that that's unfair. He should be paid. Microdot, uh, you can check him out. He's a YouTube channel, but he's, he's working with the defense supposedly on, he, he got the audio up where you can hear Jim McKay actually talk to her sister mm -hmm. out of one of those times at like six Oh seven in the morning. Saying, saying it, hey, saying somebody's it. coming. They're sending someone. They're sending help. Yeah. She said it just like that. They're sending help. Why would you need to do that? They also got, break down the phone calls. So I would, we're going to link that in the description to these two videos that we are recommending you watch. Definitely. Um, definitely catch that out. Uh, so back to got, the motion to dismiss, though. Okay. 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 I am jumping ahead. I'm sorry. I was just That's giving okay. a whole rough timeline of what's what all happened doing. since we've gotten it's craziness. You are correct. I did pull it up. Alan Jackson's statement. He said that Juror D um, re contacted Alan Jackson directly. They mm -hmm. did contact the, because they were uncomfortable with how the trial ended. Quote, he slash she said that the last day of trial was a, quote, whirlwind and everything happened fast. He, she recounted that his, her perspective was that the jury was brought in the courtroom, the note was read, the mistrial was declared, and the jury was then rushed out of the courtroom. He, she described the end of the trial as very confusing. And the jury believed that they were compelled to come to a resolution on all counts before they could or should report verdicts on any of the counts. So juror D reiterated that he, she believes it would be unjust for Karen Reed to be retried on either the count one, second degree murder, or count three, leaving the scene with injury or death. Because the er jury already found unanimously that she was not guilty of those charges. Now, 
with count two, there's a lot more than just drunk driving in count two. And I could see where that's, you know, um, where it could come out to be like, yeah, was she driving drunk? There's no blood test. There's okay. no sobriety test. There's nothing. You know what I'm saying? So how are you faulting her on drunk driving when you've got no evidence? So murder in the second degree, manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor and leaving a scene of personal injury. See what I was talking about? It's like so it's a whole it's, bunch combined. So what they did not find her uh, not guilty for was the manslaughter charge. So she could still uh, be charged with manslaughter, but they found her not guilty of murder and leaving the scene. So if they were found her not guilty of leaving the scene of a person who was injured or dead, with, uh, leaving the scene with injury or death, if they didn't find her guilty of that, how can they find her guilty of manslaughter? Well, and that's was the... Uh... One of them said, I think it was on the Melody Little show. Melanie um, Little? Attorney yeah, Little. Attorney Little. Uh, I think it was on their thing about it was confusing to some of the jurors about how count two came about because it's like uh, manslaughter. Well, she's not being charged, but it was driving a vehicle underneath the influence and yeah. a whole, uh, something else. It's like three different things that should have been different. It should have been spread it out so they could be like, no, no. All right. Yes. You know, she's driving under the influence, but there's no proof about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, me and you have talked to talked about this already about in the army. I might buy a bunch of drinks from, for my friends. Mm -hmm. I might have one, one drink. It only takes an hour for it to come out of my system by the army standards. Yeah. For one drink, one shot, one glass of wine. And then I'm supposedly able to drive. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like she drove him to the house. She gated it all the way home in a snowstorm. And then the next morning she comes right back. That's that's pretty amazing to me mm -hmm. when I've been in whiteouts and you can't see nothing and you want to play drunk. Hmm. It just something just doesn't add up to that either. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The whole thing is kind of crazy. So let's talk about so uh, the fallout. Let's talk about what happened to Trooper Proctor. In fact, let's let them see what Boston reported last night. Shall we share this video? We shall. We shall. We shall. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that beautiful bean footage. All right, let's watch this news clip. And uh, we will do Straight it. Straight out of Boston. Yeah, he is. He's like, Psst. let's let's put it big up here. Okay, here we go. That and definitely spray tanned. You think? Hmm. Yeah. The Canton police chief says that Albert was put on leave related to the testimony of Trooper Michael Proctor, the lead investigator during the Reed case. Interestingly, Albert was put on leave back on June 13th, but it only came to light tonight. <laughs> and now the state police union is defending Trooper Proctor, saying they are, quote, disappointed that he was suspended without pay for his inappropriate text messages revealed during the trial. WBZ's Tammy Mutasa explains this new fallout from the closely watched case. Tonight, it's a hot topic in Canton. Police practices and, of course, Trooper Michael Proctor. Plus, a bombshell announcement about another law enforcement officer connected to the Reed case. I haven't broken any law. No, you're picking and choosing totally In the midst of the drama over time limits That's at the top of mind for Karen yeah, reporters at the Canton Select Board That's meeting, her. it's town policing and the murder case lead investigator, Trooper Michael Proctor. He's now been suspended without pay after sending offensive texts about Reed to his colleagues, family, and friends during the investigation. He deserves to be terminated, and we need to rid our policing systems 
of all Michael Proctors. During the meeting, even- though, a surprise announcement. Go ahead, pause. Rita, what, Rita was literally frothing at the mouth, man. She is hot. Y'all now, gotta- do you agree? I, I Here's the thing. I understand the union taking a part of this and saying, all right, he should be on paid leave until it, it comes down. Um. The, I understand because there's investigation going on. It's not, it's the union. The union has to protect its own because if one yeah. gets and the other one doesn't, it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? You have to yeah. have both sides. And the union did release a, a statement. And their statement was that the reason why they are opposed to the suspension without pay is because it hurts his children and they'll lose their medical. Yes. And I mean, I understand that. But he didn't think about that when he was doing it. It's it's that's his fault. I also think it's funny um, because of the I thought you were going to continue the, the clip, but um, I am. I am. You want the, me to go right now? Yeah. The next officer that gets in trouble leads right up to what was said in the courts. Mm hmm. Okay, let's go back to a fraud. Michael Proctor's. During the meeting, though, a surprise announcement. Chief Rafferty has placed Kevin Albert on paid administrative leave while an outside and please be quiet. The Canton Police (laughs) Chief now. They started clapping. So Kevin Albert was Detective Kevin Kevin Albert. His name was brought up by Michael Proctor on the stand. I know because he dropped his gun and his badge in his Mm -hmm. mailbox. Yep. And uh, and got drunk, and they uh, drove the <laughs> yeah, squad they, car they while drove drunk. Those actual <laughs> cop cars while drunk. So Kevin Albert obviously is Brian Albert, the homeowner's brother. Who says Kevin Albert, a Canton police officer and brother to Brian Albert, the homeowner where John O'Keefe's body was found, is now on paid administrative leave. Kevin Albert was placed on leave on June 13th and will remain on leave until the results of the investigation are provided by the Pause. other side. Independent he said June 13th. Why was that not brought up during the whole entire time of trial? It was in trial on June 13th. No, I'm saying like him, if he's been placed on paid administrative leave since June 13th. Nobody knew. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, it's not pertinent to the murder trial. Well, I got that, but at least the news should have said something about it. They didn't know. That's what okay. they were saying. Yeah, they didn't know. They just found out he's he been on leave since June thirteenth. And look at who the problem I have with this. Is. Yeah, and the problem with I that I have with this is he did something. Even you know, take care and read out of it. He left his gun and his badge in someone else's vehicle he lost control of his own weapon that should not be paid administrative leave that should be a suspension anybody else they would have been suspended so what makes him so special he's an albert and the fact that he's getting a paid vacation since june 13th at the tax payers expense is just astounding. That's what I was saying about the whole Micro Proctor. I mean, I understand what the union is doing, but you know, consequences are consequences. Like, there's no, hey, let me let me put some icing on this. No, like if you did this shit in the army, you're getting you're getting J- whammy. Yeah, yeah, you're getting an Article 15 done. Yeah. Uh, Article 15, possibly discharge. Separation. Uh, so, <laughs> uh. Yeah, it, it, it's. I, I'm just astounded how deep this is. And then a public apology from another Albert brother, Chris. He's a select board member and a witness in the retrial who had recent verbal arguments with people. Despite the tremendous harassment, stress, and anxiety that my family, extended family, and I have been subjected to over the past 16 months, my interactions were inappropriate. And as an elected official, I am held to a higher standard. Meanwhile, the state police union no is apology. Proctor, saying in a statement in part, the decision to suspend him without pay pending the outcome of the investigation is disappointing because it shifts Trooper Proctor's punishment to his young family, 
his children will lose access to benefits such as health insurance. You have to understand that some of the conduct uh, is in direct violation of department rules and regulations. So things like sharing state police business is a violation. Todd McGee is a retired Massachusetts state trooper with 24 years on the job. He says it's still the union's job to defend Proctor, but he offers this insight on the process for disciplinary actions. The department has high expectations of all of its members to have the utmost integrity and to maintain that level of confidentiality about police business, mm -hmm. especially yeah. in a high profile case. Mm -hmm. Now there's a state police internal affairs investigation that will determine if Proctor will ever return to the job. <laughs> in Canton, Tammy Matassa, WBZ News. Tammy, Tammy. So that's a big deal. And yeah, and he said exactly what I was talking about with the union. I, mm -hmm. I see why the union, I've seen unions, they work for the people. Right. Against like corporates and stuff. Unions like that. are meant to protect uh, its yeah. members. And and they're doing their job. The, my disagreement is that Trooper Proctor is the one who brought the punishment on his children. Because in any other department outside of Canton, had he done that, he would have been fired. Gone. He, yeah, yeah, he would have. It would have been done. And then what for his children? He, I, 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 you know, at some point, as parents, we recognize when we have kids, what we do affects them. Our decisions Absolutely. affect them. So it's not on Canton PD that he's being suspended. It's on Trooper Proctor Amen. that he's being suspended without pay. Yeah. Cry me totally a river. with you. Because he's full of shit. No, oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I swore. Is that a bad word? Well, you've done, dropped the F-bomb. No, I didn't. I stopped it. I said... she Judge Canoni needs to recuse herself. She has to disqualify herself. They need to have a hearing. This is what I think. And talk to these jurors. And if this is the case... Um, how do you even process this? I can't see, maybe this is me with Pollyanna glasses or Pollyanna eyes and rose colored glasses. I cannot see Judge Canoni intentionally withholding to screw over the defense. I just don't want to think that maybe? i told you there's just something weird about it and i've been telling you since day one just something's fishy like sh either she doesn't know what she's doing or but that whole mm -hmm. ending like you know they had to stand up there and have the paperwork changed mm -hmm. for the jurors to deliberate on like for that and then all of a sudden you're going to End it with a mistrial, but not let defense do a poll count. Or... Yeah, there's no polling of the jury. I don't understand that. And I'm still, I'm, I'm puzzled. I'm puzzled. Yeah. And if this goes through, I mean, hell, if all 12 jurors end up contacting Alan Jackson, then <laughs> what are you going to say then? So I will have to tell you, um, the deaf he heard case was the most insane civil trial I've ever seen. And as far as a criminal murder trial, this one is the crazy. And I've seen, I've, I've, I've been in courtrooms. This is the craziest, most insane murder trial. And we watched it from beginning to end. And it's just like, ugh. I'm still puzzled, you know, 67 witnesses that, that couldn't Said remember nothing. that couldn't remember what happened that day, which is astonishing because in the army, you know, it's been years and I can still tell you what happened that day. What well, no, they only didn't remember anything when the defense was questioning those witnesses. So I, I don't know, but we would like you guys to uh, stay tuned to our next video because we want to break down John O'Keefe's brother, Paul O'Keefe's yeah. interviews. And please, people, 
the one thing that we are asking is don't judge him. And that's hard for me to say to myself. He lost his brother. He's grieving. He wants justice for John O'Keefe. It's not even about Karen Reed for him, Trooper Proctor or anything. He wants justice for his brother. So that's my take. What's yours, Tommy? You know, some people get duped. You, you know, think he was that, duped? I know he was duped because there's no way that you, your mom, are going down this alley after sitting in, you know, a month and a half long trial. Right. And still believing the family and that he, your brother died at. Yeah. And just, just no way. Because the way I look at it is you got duped, man. Either someone hypnotized you or you've got blinders on. Like you're just not wanting to see the truth. And Maybe confirmation beautiful. bias was already instilled in him from the very beginning because I think so. He got all of his information from Proctor. We're going to call him the McAlberts. Okay. The McCabe's and Alberts. Um, it was Paul that invited them to, to the last day, to the last day of trial for, which to me is just after you hear expert testimony. <laughs> But keep in mind also, he's already lost a sister. He's now lost a brother. Or did he lose a brother? Two brothers now. I don't know. But no, a brother and a sister. Because a remember, sister. John adopted the kids. Yeah. And then his mom. From his sister, right? His mom and John got into that big civil mm -hmm. dispute through the court system over who gets custody of the kids. And John won it. And, uh, yeah, I just, it's been rough on that family. And, and that's is. the truth. And then once the blinders come off, I think it's really going to be rough. On it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt really, really bad. So let's watch this, shall we? Because, you know, I feel for him. I really, really do. And I don't want hate to come upon him. He's just trying to find out what happened to his brother. Well, you guys heard us about this uh, dismissal. Uh, two of them now. Uh, no, it's one. Just one motion to dismiss. But it's an ad, right? It's for a, jury number four is an ad. Alan Jackson just filed an affidavit regarding the contact with. That's jury. what I meant. Affidavit. Uh, I I said ad. I'm sorry, guys. I am not legal <laughs> savvy. <laughs> all right, it's all right. But you know what's good about that, though, Tommy, is that you have the perspective of a true juror. No legal background. Yeah. Don't go through this stuff. So I, I appreciate you. And it's fine. People don't know. You know, an affidavit is a sworn statement. A motion is when you're asking for the court to do something. So he did filed a motion to dismiss, but he filed an affidavit alerting the court that, hey, this is my sworn statement. Juror num this juror contacted me and this is what they said. Yep. All, right, all in all, I think um, I think it's good. I hope they all reach out, honestly. Because I, I want, do. I, and I'm not saying justice for Karen Reed. I just want justice, period. I want it I to want all come out. All the lies gone away. And here's the facts. And I want it to come out of what it is. You know, because I, this has been interesting to me. I, I know I just cut you off and I no, 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 I cut you off. It's but okay. you know me, I don't usually watch court trials. I love crew crimes and I, I, I will watch documentaries. I will read about it. But for my first sit in on a court case, I got ups and downs where I was pissed off and I was excited and I was hyped. Yeah. And then I'd be pissed off again. Like yeah. it's wow, very emotional. I, it, it, truly is and I, I i thank you and ladies and gentlemen i thank you guys too for for tuning in and watching us uh but yeah. we got another video to do and we're gonna switch out and with on that news i'm tommy i'm mel and we will spoke at you later peace <laughs>